I don't care what the liberals say. I don't care what the naysayers say. This nation was founded as a Christian nation. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. There's only one God. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. I'm tired of people telling me that I can't say those words. I'm tired of people telling us as Christians that we can't voice our beliefs or we can't no longer pray in public. I'm Listen to me. If you don't like, love America and you don't like the way we do things, I got one thing to say. Get out! Well, there it is, isn't it? A picture of unabashed fascism in America, framed by enthusiastic applause. Conform, conform, be like us, act like us, think like us, or get out. Is this America? Dennis Terry, I was born and raised in America. I'm a registered voter. I'm a veteran who has risked his life on more than one occasion in my duties as an airborne infantryman for America. I pay taxes above and beyond that of the average American. I do not, nor have I ever, worshipped Jesus Christ, and I am not going anywhere except in your face, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't care what the liberals say. I don't care what the naysayers say. This nation was founded as a Christian nation. He said so himself. He doesn't care what you have to say. He doesn't care about facts. All he cares about is who is saying it. This is overt, prideful bigotry to enthusiastic applause. This man has proclaimed that America is a Christian nation by the authority of nothing more than his own frantic shouting. Now I could talk to him about the Founding Fathers, I could talk to him about history and the Treaty of Tripoli till he's blue in the face. But for all practical purposes, the bottom line is this. America's First Amendment protects your right to violate the First Commandment and the Second Commandment and the Third and the Fourth and the Fifth Commandment. Think about that. In just one beloved amendment, America has overruled the first half of what you define as the Ten Commandments. Now, murder, theft, and perjury are illegal, sure, but those laws were not inspired by your religion, as they were law long before your religion ever even existed. I said, we don't worship Buddha, we don't worship Mohammed. He's saying that Buddhists are not Americans. He's saying that Muslims are not Americans. This nation was founded as a Christian nation. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. There's only one God. We don't worship Allah. We worship God. Actually, you do worship Allah, who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Allah is the God of the Old Testament. Allah is just an Arab word for capital G, God. It's as if I said my favorite color is green, but I hate the color verde. You're just displaying your ignorance. Abraham is mentioned 69 times in the Quran. Isaac is mentioned 17 times, and Jacob is mentioned 16 times in the Quran. Those are just three of the 25 prophets in the Quran. And isn't it funny that as a worshiper of the Abrahamic God, that you'd recognize the names of the Islamic prophets. Names like John, Zacharias, Elijah, Jonah, Ezekiel, Solomon, David. Noah is mentioned 43 times in the Quran. Moses is mentioned 136 times in the Quran. Jesus is mentioned 29 times in the Quran as a beloved prophet. And Muhammad is mentioned four times in the Quran. Now, I hold no reverence for any of those people, and I certainly don't believe that they were prophets. But you do, Dennis. 
You have far, far more in common with Muslims than I do. You may not like that, but that's just the way it is. I'm tired of people telling us as Christians that we can't voice our beliefs or we can't no longer pray in public. You can't voice your beliefs? Who could possibly be so stupid as to complain that they can't do something while they're doing it? You poor persecuted soul. People told you that you can't pray in public? We want examples. Tell us who told you this. Tell us their names. I bet you can't. Because we honor the First Amendment. And honoring that means that we must endure your nonsense. We know that. I want you to be able to live your life as a Christian or as however you see fit. I would never try to force you to live according to my preferred lifestyle, but you would. So who's the real advocate of freedom here? I believe the church is to be the conscience of the nation. The church needs to be the conscience of our state and our local community. The church, the church, he says, is to be the conscience of a nation. But what is he really saying? You see, this man is a church leader. Now, you will never see God speaking for himself. No, you will see men like this pastor speak for God. He's a convenient middleman for the Almighty. So what he's really saying is that he is to be your conscience. And he wonders why people oppose him. Susan B. Anthony said, I always distrust people who know so much about what God wants them to do to their fellows. Susan B. Anthony was an atheist who helped shape the Constitution. And as paradoxical as this coin is, at least she was American enough to be put on it. As long as they continue to tell our children they cannot pray in public schools or play, pray in open public places today, somebody's got to take a stand and say, God, forgive us. God, have mercy upon us. You cannot pray in public? Again, I need examples. Tell us who says you can't pray in public. We're saying that you cannot impose your prayer upon others. You cannot force other people to pray or use your prayer as some kind of organized spectacle to impede or impose upon publicly funded functions and facilities. Because believe it or not, not everyone who pays taxes is a Christian. The First Amendment says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, which includes the law that demands that I, as a landowner, pay for the publicly funded functions and facilities that you want to use as an establishment for your religion. Now, ironically, this man is giving this politically charged speech in a building that doesn't produce a single dime of tax revenue. Astounding, isn't it? Well, the answer is no. You cannot have my money. You can take the money of your congregation, but you are not allowed to violate one of the most vital laws of my country. As long as they continue to kill little babies in our mother's womb, somebody's got to take a stand and say, it's not right. God be merciful to us as a nation. Now, whether you think abortion should be legal or illegal is beside the point I'm about to make. Notice this guy's rhetorical language. He says, if they continue to kill little babies in our mother's wombs. Now, imagine if you were an outsider, completely ignorant about social issues, and this was the first guy you listened to. You'd think that people are kidnapping Christian women off the street and killing their unborn viable fetuses against the mother's will. This language is inaccurate, and it's inaccurate on purpose. That's called dishonesty. And if I were this guy, I'd try to refrain from using my religion to convince people that abortion is wrong because according to the Bible, God has commanded the deaths of infants. And even without the Bible, according to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, 10 to 25 percent of all pregnancies result in natural, spontaneous abortion. Which means that if your God is real, as far as abortions go, human beings can't even begin to compete with the Almighty. As long as sexual perversion 
is becoming normalized. Somebody needs to stand up and say, God, forgive us. God, have mercy upon us. Sexual perversion. What is that exactly? I mean, it's all relative, even amongst the religious. Years ago, only missionary position for purposes of procreation was acceptable. Anything else would have been considered perverted. Just imagine the audacity I would have to have to think it appropriate for me to impose my sexual preferences upon you. These so-called conservatives are anything but. They don't want smaller, less intrusive government. They want the government to be entwined with the most intimate and spiritual areas of your life. They want control over you, and they want to use your belief in God, and most importantly, your fear to obtain control over you. Frantic fear and paranoia. As long as they continue to tell our children they cannot pray in public schools or play, pray in open public places today, somebody's got to take a stand and say, God, forgive us. God, have mercy upon us. Again, notice the misleading language. You're allowed to pray in public. And guess what? Even if you weren't, you can pray while people are telling you that you're not allowed to pray. I mean, what is it about your communications with the Almighty that require the aid, attention, or participation of other people? How many times do I have to tell these people that Jesus himself was against public prayer? As long as they continue to tear down traditional marriage. Listen, God intended for marriage to be between a man and a woman. And as long as they continue to attack marriage, somebody needs to take a stand and say, No! 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 As a man who has been very happy with his wife for 16 years now, I can honestly say that nobody else's marriage, gay or straight, has ever had an effect on my marriage. And if you can't provide direct evidence that shows exactly how same-sex marriage causes whatever doom you think is being imposed upon us, then you have no argument. It's superstition, plain and simple. I mean, if someone introduced a bill that says you gotta flip a light switch on and off five times before you're allowed to enter a room, I'd see that in the same vein as a bill against gay marriage. It's like mandated OCD. And incidentally, if the current GOP did introduce a light switch flipping bill, they'd call it the anti-OCD bill. I'm telling you, my friend, I believe that Christians in America are the key to revival. I believe that Christians in America is the key to the economy turning around. I believe that Christians in America is the key to the jobless rate continuing to go down. I believe it's a spiritual thing. If we'll put God back in America, put God back in our pulpits, put God back in our homes and in our state house, and then in Washington, D.C., then we can have revival in America, and the Holy Spirit will show up, and great and mighty things will happen for this country. He doesn't give you any data. He doesn't give you any examples. He doesn't even give you any reasons. These are just plain assertions with nothing to back them up. In fact, it can be shown that the opposite can happen. The month following Rick Perry's huge public prayer was disastrous for America and for his state of Texas, which suffered widespread wildfires. And though Rick Perry used this same strategy of put making God a priority, he has no hope of winning the election. Dennis Terry, you are demonstrably wrong. You say you're not allowed to do things as you do them. You act un-American while telling millions of other people that they are not Americans. You claim to be a Christian while advocating the very concepts that Jesus Christ was explicitly against. You propose strategies that have been shown to be ineffectual at best and highly detrimental at worst. You're against the Constitution which says you can't mandate your prayer upon the public. And you lie to your congregation, telling them that you're not allowed to pray in public. And you do this of all places in a building which gets a special exemption from the taxes necessary to make public places exist in the first place. You ungrateful 
ungrateful hypocrite. You want control over the places I pay for. You want control over our relationships and sex lives. You provide no data to support your assertions. You're an empty soup with prepackaged platitudes. You're a bigot and a fear monger. You are everything you think your enemies are. And I can think of no greater punishment for you than for you to gain just enough enlightenment for you to realize that you are what you hate.